Greetings and salutations from Flyover Country. My apologies in advance for the lack of my usual soothing voice. My 13-year-old son brought home a surprise in the form of a common cold. Huh. Strange. Is there such a thing as an uncommon cold? Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so last week our lovely pretender-in-chief essentially declared his power unlimited. Taking to the podium, Joe Biden mimicked the mannerisms of an angry drunk. He announced that he had ordered OSHA to create a rule to force all businesses with more than 100 employees to mandate the bat stew vaccine. Now, in doing so, he threatened the unvaccinated, claiming he could get governors who resist, quote, out of the way, and asserted that, quote, patience was running out for those who don't comply. It was truly the most disturbing, tyrannical speech I've ever heard from a president, and I don't say that lightly. Folks, we have entered a new place as a nation, and that place is not good. Now, before we get much further into it, let's take a quick commercial break to pay some bills. And a quick shout out to everyone who's shown additional support through PayPal, Hero Soap, and the Teespring merchandise, and of course, the Patriot Supply Meals. Friends, I'm going to point out the obvious. It seems like big government and big tech are trying to destroy America. Everything they touch turns into a disaster. Pretty soon, the whole system will fall apart, and the first thing to fall will be the food supply chain. So, do you have enough emergency food to get through a serious long-term crisis where you can't get food at the grocery store? Most people don't, and they'll panic when the time comes. That is why the smart move now is to get long-term storage emergency food before things go bad. I highly recommend my Patriot Supply. They've served millions of American families and have over 41,000 four-star and five-star reviews. Their mission is your survival. And right now, you can save 25% on a four-week kit of emergency food that will save the day, probably soon. Order a starter kit for each member of your family and they'll ship everything quickly and discreetly to your door. Go to preparewithresurgence.com so you can claim your four-week emergency food kit and save 25% in the process. That's preparewithresurgence.com or hit that link in the description box. Okay, now given the severity of this situation we now find ourselves in, you'd hope a real opposition party would be ready to go. But unfortunately, the GOP is not a real opposition party. So instead, we get bot quality responses like this BS. Ronna McDaniel tweeted out this beauty. Biden sowed doubt about the vaccine for months during the campaign. He inherited a successful vaccine program, but he failed to get people vaccinated as president. Now he wants to coerce small businesses to do what he couldn't. Mitch McConnell, oh, I'm sorry, Kevin McCarthy. I get these two confused from time to time. Anyways, he tweeted out President Biden has made small businesses an enemy of his administration forcing Main Street to vax or pay a fine will not only crash the economy, he's put on life support, it's flat out un-American. He finished up the tweet by saying to Joe Biden, force is more important than freedom. Americans won't stand for it. Well, gee, Kevin, you've stood for everything else so far. You see, folks, the issue here is not small businesses being attacked. There are real people who are going to be affected by this, even those who work for very large businesses. And they are the victims of this abuse of power. You see, businesses will just fire anyone who might cost them the $14,000 fine. It is the workers who will end up without a job and no income. So, GOP, when speaking out, they should be the priority. So, retreating to the Chamber of Commerce approved platitudes about Democrats hating small businesses is the laziest response imaginable. It does not move the needle an inch, and it once again shows the massive, massive disconnect between the establishment GOP and the working class American taxpayer. Do you remember this clip? No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand to be mandatory, but I would do everything in my power. Just like I don't think masks have to be made mandatory nationwide. I'll do everything in my power as the president of the United States to encourage people to do the right thing, and when they do it, demonstrate that it matters. That's why I said on my, in my inaugural speech, I'm going to ask people to commit for 100 days to wear a mask. Not because I'm asking it uh, to, for any reason to punish. This is not a political issue. It's become one. But if people do it for 100 days, 
in the middle of what will be still a raging crisis and the vaccine is able to be distributed, they're going to see deaths drop off the edge. They're going to see hundreds of thousands of people not getting sick. And my hope is they'll be then inclined to say, OK, it's worth it's worth the patriotic duty to go ahead and protect other people. Thank you all so very much. Now, I'm going to blow some minds here, so you might want to sit down. Not really, I just like to be sarcastic when I point out obvious things. Joe Biden, along with the snotty elitists really running this administration and probably cleaning his diapers, don't care about your lecturing. They don't give a damn about you calling him a liar. They could give two shits about you pointing out his hypocrisy. They really don't care one iota about your threats of lawsuits, though those will be necessary soon. We are led by a very stupid, selfish, delusional old man with clear signs of dementia who is not going to run again in 2024 anyways. Biden has nothing to lose. This low IQ on his best day 20 years ago couldn't have made it as a bellhop in one of Trump's hotels. For evidence, simply look at his offspring. So he, like many dictators before him, wants to go down in history for something, good or bad. Now, when it comes to messaging, there is only one thing the GOP should be saying. Do not comply. Say it with me, folks. Do not comply. Even Democrats like AOC could run with that one. Pretty simple. Now, I'm not asking the National Republican Party to do anything they don't have the power to do. I'm not claiming they're weak or not passing legislation they don't have the ability to pass, nor am I asking for them to lead some national uprising. I know they aren't going to lead. Rather, I'm simply asking for them to grow a damn spine, to stop playing it safe, and to use their national platform to pointedly tell people not to comply. That is the only way to beat this in any practical aspect. Here's a damned good example of that from J.D. Vance. Quote, Do not comply with the mandates. Do not pay the government's fines. Don't allow yourself to be bullied and controlled. Only mass civil disobedience will save us from Joe Biden's naked authoritarianism, unquote. Folks, this isn't difficult. Now is the time to take a stand. It's not the time to be meek, worried that CNN might call you an insurrectionist. It is perfectly legitimate for Americans to recognize a blatantly unconstitutional act and to respond with non-compliance. In short, we need to call this dipshit's bluff. Make Joe Biden enforce his dictatorial nonsense. It'll be a PR nightmare. As unbelievably screwed up as this country has gotten over the past year, this is still not Australia. You're not going to get away with that type of crap around here. Some of this came by way of redstate.com. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.